Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at Morphe's with a French Moss 45, a French 22 caliber military training rifle that was actually developed and initially produced at the Mauser factory in Germany. So the origin of this goes back to 1945, where on April 20th, uh, first lead elements of the French military occupied the city of Oberndorf am Neckar. That's the city where the Mauser factory is located. And uh, Oberndorf would be in the French zone of occupation after the war, and that left France in control of the Mauser factory. Now, uh, when the French arrived, a lot of the cool stuff at Mauser had already been loaded on a train and sent down towards Austria to try and re-establish uh, research and production at, at a hidden mountain base uh, for an ongoing fight. That of course would never happen. Uh, the train was captured by the Allies, and the story of that train is a really cool story in and of itself that we will talk about at a later date. Uh, what the French found when they arrived at Mauser was not so much of some of that cool exotic stuff, you know, stamp Sturmgewehr prototypes and such, but they did find a lot of things still intact, and in particular they found all of the 22 caliber rifle manufacturing equipment still intact. The tooling was there, the production was pretty well set up, there were a lot of parts around. This was something that Mauser had been doing, making training rifles for the German military, specifically the KKW or Klein Kaliber Versportgewehr, small caliber military sporting rifle, military practice rifle. Uh, and, and so this was all pretty much available, and the French didn't have a good training rifle at the time. There, there had been some 22 caliber uh, Lebel look-alikes, oh, while back, but of course the French are now running the Moss 36, uh, which has a rear-mounted aperture sight and a substantially different form factor from the Lebel. So uh, once production, once the French restart uh, activities at the Mauser plant, which only takes a couple of months, they start uh, assembling a lot of guns that parts are still lying around for. They start assembling P38s, P08 Lugers, HSC pistols. Uh, they actually continue restart production of the Car 98K Mauser. And they get the idea that, hey, this is a good opportunity for us to get a 22 caliber training rifle. So uh, the engineers, the German engineers who are still working at Mauser under French control, are, are given a list of requirements for a 22 rifle to develop for the French military. Um, and they go ahead and do it. The requirements are mostly your sort of standard stuff. It needs to be accurate, it needs to be reliable, it needs to be easy to disassemble. Uh, in particular, it needs to have a rear-mounted aperture sight to match the French standard sight pattern. They weren't quite producing Moss 44 semi-auto rifles yet, but they certainly were aware of the configuration of them, and that was going to have a rear-mounted aperture as well, so we'll keep that feature. And then interestingly, they also wanted the action to be strong enough that it could conceivably be converted over to 5.6 by, I believe it was 37, rimmed uh, centerfire cartridge, if they wanted to. Um, that would never actually happen, but it's interesting, and you'll see uh, some features in, in the bolt when we take this apart, that are, are designed for that requirement. So uh, Mauser has a bunch of 22 caliber rifles that it's done, uh, and it, they go ahead and just basically kind of mix and match bits from their existing 22 designs to come up with a design that will suit the French. Oh, I should of course say it also has a five round detachable magazine. Uh, because the French specifically wanted that. This is something that the standard German training rifles of the period did not have. Those were all single shot guns. So uh, by August, uh, early August, the Germans present three different models to the French. The French probably not coincidentally picked the cheapest one, uh, both cheapest to manufacture on a per gun basis, and also the cheapest to set up production and tooling for. And uh, by mid-late August of 1945, the guns are going into production. So these came about pretty darn quickly. Uh, production would run until June of 1946, with about 10,500 of them produced at Mauser. Uh, after that, the French have to shut down the Mauser factory operations. The Soviets are complaining that people weren't supposed to be making guns in German factories on German soil. Uh, the Allies like had this agreement that they wouldn't continue arms production in Germany, which the French are totally doing, which the Russians are pretty much also totally doing in East Germany, what would become East Germany. Uh, but the French shut the plant down, they end up demolishing most of the buildings, and they distribute the tooling 
uh, and parts. So the, the tooling actually gets distributed to like a dozen different countries as war reparations, and the French take a bunch of it themselves. And the French take all of the tooling for the MOS 45, uh, which is at the time called the Model 45 uh, in Mauser, and they take all of the tooling to produce it, all the spare parts, and they ship them back to MOS, where they continue production on their own at MOS, hence MOS 45. And they produce another 30,000, a little over 30,000 of them at MOS. So uh, with that in mind, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this. I'll show you how it works mechanically, and a few of the differences between the German and the French produced examples. All right, so what we have here is essentially a German a Mauser KKW receiver and bolt assembly. If you look at a KKW you'll see this kind of distinctive really scooped out opening on the top of the receiver. They did however put a rear aperture sight on it uh, per French requirements. And then the KKW was a single shot rifle. So uh, the magazine and the trigger guard that's set up to accommodate the magazine uh, have been adopted from the Mauser 410B. And this is a simple matter of pull the lever back, and the magazine comes out, holds five rounds. And then we have a front sight uh, sort of barrel and stocking arrangement from the Mauser ES340B. Uh, so bits and pieces from all the various German rifles. Mechanically we basically have a little 22 caliber Mauser system here, uh, because of course that's what the Germans had wanted for the KKW for their own training. So we have a flag safety, uh, on the right side is safe, the left side is fire, uh, cock on closing. An interesting feature on the underside of the rifle, the bottom of the trigger guard is checkered, and that is for actually resting uh, your support hand on when you're shooting offhand, uh, so that you have a little bit of grip here uh, for a finger or thumb. There are sling swivels on the front end of the stock, and the back, uh, and the French issued or made uh, both a simple carry strap and also a uh, proper shooting sling for these. Now for markings we have predominantly a big receiver mark here. Uh, this is one of the French manufactured examples. The early, the, the German production ones have a Mauser sort of barrel uh, banner logo here on the top, and they're marked Mod 45. Uh, when the French took all of the German parts to Saint-Étienne at the end of German production, that included parts that were partially completed, including receivers that already had German markings on them. And uh, so the first handful of French production guns were made with receivers that were already stamped with the Mauser banner, and on those uh, the French added manufacture Moss up at the top. Um, some of those will be marked 45A, there's no difference in the gun, it was just a different German uh, receiver marking, probably because it was the Type A uh, original pattern that was adopted by the French. Anyway, once the French uh, got through their stockpile of already marked German receivers, and started using both blank receivers and making their own receivers, the marking changed to this, which is the more common standard pattern, uh, Moss Model 45. Here on the left side of the barrel we also have a caliber marking, Cal 5.5-22 long rifle. On the French examples you'll have a serial number on the right side of the receiver under the sight. These are all F pattern, uh, the F is a little hard to read on this one. Uh, but as with other French military rifles they used serial number prefix letters. Moss began everything with the F series, and the French would make just a little over 30,000 of these. The bolt here has the last three digits of the serial number matched on it. The butt plate is also marked Moss. The early versions had a Mauser marked butt plate. The rear sight is actually graduated uh, in 10 meter increments from 30 out to 150, and it is adjustable for windage uh, here on the rear sight. Now the front sight has this nice serrated ramp on it to prevent glare, and these came with a sheet metal front sight protector that is really tight down on top of the sight. As you can see there, you do not actually shoot it with that sight protector on, That's it makes for a very goofy sight picture. So you pull the sight protector off, it's just 
held in place in a pair of grooves there. And this allows you to see that the front sight is also replaceable. So if you needed to change the elevation to re-zero the rifle, uh, that was sort of an armor level thing. You can punch out a pin and replace the front sight with one of a different height. A couple other minor variations between the French and German production. Uh, the Germans blued the guns, the French parkerized them, uh, the Germans used uh, oak for the woodstocks, the French used beech, uh, and the Germans actually used a left hand twist and a 66 centimeter long barrel, uh, where the French had a right hand twist and a 61 centimeter long barrel. So slight differences. Uh, the, the finish blued versus parked is probably the most easily noticeable. Now disassembly is easy, we just lift the bolt release out and pull the bolt out. And we actually have two locking lugs here. So the bolt handle acts as one lug and then there is a second lug opposite it. That gives it uh, parallel locking uh, and that was a requirement for the potential rechambering that the French were potentially interested in, which as I said never actually happened. But on the receiver you can see that there is a cutout here for that second locking lug, and then this lug locks in behind the bolt handle. So those are your two parallel locking surfaces. Disassembly further of the bolt, I just push this spring in, and I can pull the whole um, cocking piece and striker assembly out. Note that there are two little wings on it there that have two matching cuts in the bolt body. And then, interestingly, our bolt body is separate right there. It's got its serial number electro penciled on. And we have our rotating locking lugs right here in the form of this sleeve with the bolt handle. So open and locked. And if you want to further disassemble the bolt, uh, you can push the cocking piece down, rest the firing pin on something that is has a little give to it. Let me use some paper here. Rotate that. Sorry, that ended up being off camera. Um, what you do is push the firing pin down on a relatively soft surface, uh, something that won't chip it, and compress this down until you are able to rotate the cocking piece uh, 90 degrees, and then the cocking piece comes off. And then you can pull this assembly off the back, off of the firing pin. Uh, this spring has quite a lot of tension to it and there is a high probability of it going flying across the room. Be careful and don't put your face over it when you're doing this. And then the safety lever just rotates to the other side and then it can come off. So it's not exactly the simplest sort of 22 caliber uh, firing system to machine, but all of this stuff, the tooling had already been set up by the Germans and so the cost to actually put them into production and to make them was uh, was low enough that it made sense to use this existing system. The Moss 45 is not like an international quality precision rifle, um, target rifle, but it is a very serviceable military trainer uh, and it got quite a lot of use through the 1970s uh, when the French were using the Moss 36, the Moss 44, the Moss 49, the 4956. This would serve as a, a new recruits training rifle for all of those rifles. Uh, in the 1970s many of them, if not most of them, were surplused. When the FAMAS was adopted the requirement for a separate 22 caliber trainer kind of dropped off. Uh, but at least small numbers of them are still in use today, as I know from some inquiries that uh, the chap on Bloke on the Range made. And by the way, I'll link to it at the end of this video. Uh, Bloke on the Range has a cool video on this same rifle in which they go into some of the French shooting drill and actually take one of these out to the range. So if you're interested in some of that aspect uh, of the gun as well, I would encourage you to check out Bloke on the Range's video. At any rate, um, a, a, a lot of them ended up surplused. You can find them pretty easily kind of around the world. There are a lot of them in the United States now. Uh, there's a reasonable decent number of them in Europe still as well, and they make a really fine 22 caliber uh, plinking, practicing, shooting, uh, good for all purposes sort of rifle. So um, chap at Bloke on the Range complained that this rifle should have been in my book on French rifles, and he is correct, uh, and at some point we will do a second edition and we'll add this in. Uh, but I thought it'd be cool to show it to you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.